Mac is a proud corporate partner of Texas Tech Athletics. Local, live, late breaking. You're watching KMAC. This is KMAC Red Raider Nation's Countdown to Kickoff. Sponsored by Covenant Medical Group Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. Back here on Countdown to Kickoff, Texas Tech and Arizona meeting for the 33rd time later tonight in Tucson. The Red Raiders 13 3 and 2 all time at Arizona Stadium. Our Eric Kelly there now joins us with more on why the Texas Tech receivers should be excited about this meeting with the Wildcats secondary. Eric? Yeah, David, Texas Tech often known for its wide receivers, but usually there's a go-to guy that stands out in Michael Crabtree, Kiki Kuti, or Antoine Wesley. This year, though, we've seen more of a committee-like approach through the air as the screen game of David Yost takes center stage. Through just two games, 14 different guys have caught a pass. T.J. Vasher currently leading the way with 12 catches for just 150 yards. There's been a lot of success, but not a lot of deep balls. Less than 10% of the team's completions have gone for 15 yards or more more but for those calling for more shots down the field this may be the week you've been waiting for the first two weeks we've seen a lot of cover three the first week which it's it's back them up the corners don't let people run behind you which that's and it's a defensive philosophy people take the the second week um they played a little bit more of that quarters coverage where they kind of kept everything on top and our guys were adjusting to underneath stuff that way this week we're going to probably get more man to man which is going to predicate that we've got to take those shots and we've got to hit them coming in um you know on Monday morning, you know, and coach is telling us, you know, we're getting a lot of man looks, uh, you know, that lit a smile across everybody's face. You know, we don't, being in the Big 12, you don't get to see that a lot. So, um, you know, it'll be a challenge and something that we uh, get to work against and see where we're at. And as Coach Yost mentioned, this is a coverage that is susceptible to the big play and a defense that struggles against it as well. Arizona so far this season, 126 nationally in total pass defense and 13 and a half yards per completion. David, back to you. All right, we appreciate it, Eric. We'll rejoin you there in Tucson in a bit. Since Eric's not in the studio with us this week... We've looked around. He's not. He is not. He's definitely there in Tucson. Uh, Ryan Hyatt is forced to take part in the newest portion of Countdown to Kickoff. I'm really excited, yeah. Mr. Collier. Yeah, it's called Board Games. If you weren't with us last week, basically Word Association will use the whiteboard here. Huge prizes also. Yeah, exactly. Uh, maybe a sponsorship in the future. Question one of Board Game, I guess, is... In a word, describe Khalil Tate, Arizona's quarterback who okay. the Red Raiders. Yeah, okay, I can do okay. this. Yeah. All right. All right. Do I, do I, I got to write mine down first. Yeah. yeah you go ahead and kind of you can give me an explanation as you're as going. As I understood it, there would be no math yeah. involved. Khalil Tate, problematic, yeah. hydromatic, hydromatic, dynamic, mm -hmm. all the addicts and everything else that you can be that are good. He is problematic to a defense. He's probably the most versatile quarterback you'll face, maybe even more so than Jalen Hurts. He might actually be more versatile yeah. than Jalen Hurts, and uh, that's going to be, I think, the first thing you got to account for, the problematic Khalil. Thing. Well, and you said it there. You said might be. Yeah. So that's why I go with, I don't know if you can see that. I'll put it a little closer. Yeah, I didn't write big enough. Enigma. I know. We'll work on that on the second one. I, I, I just consider him an enigma because since he's been there, in the in the desert everybody expected him to do great things i think they hired kevin sumlin thinking he could make him yep. take that next step and he hasn't done it he has the potential though and hopefully we don't see it you're supposed later to tonight. buy into one of two things that he's being held back by kevin sumlin in offensive design or he was hurt so bad last year he's still trying to come back and that might be the case but has not looked like the khalil tate he was a couple of years ago all right yeah. question number two <laughs> we'll stick with word association texas hex defense in a word Oh, this is easy. Uh, he, okay. All right. I'm well, going to write I'm bigger. So, yeah, I know. It's, all right, all there right, we go. I've got mine. There you go. Go ahead. Fire away as I scribble mine. One word. Better. 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 Yeah. This defense is better. They're better than last year. They're maybe better than advertised, and they've got a chance to show how much better they are by continue to get three and outs this weekend and maybe even get a few turnovers. I, I, I agree with better, but I'm, I'm going to go with untested. Okay. Uh, I think that's an easy one, but... What, they gave up 131 yards to UTEP yep. last week. I think Khalil Tate and that Arizona offense, even though I think they could slow him down, they could probably get 130 yards in two, three drives. Well, there's so. erasers on this, too. I thought we were just... Oh, yeah, no, there's games. an eraser on the this end. This is a high-budget deal. I know, right? All right. <laughs> All right, so I go with untested. You say better. Final question here on board games. Number of turnovers the Red Raiders will force right now. They have zero. 
All right, this is, this is going to be important. Arizona's defense. Oh, there we go. I'm going to go ahead and go with mine because you get the smart aleck one. Yeah. I'm going to go with two. They had the opportunity there. Zach McPherson had an interception, and you hear the whistles as he's walking into the end zone. I think they make good for that. Uh, Arizona turned the ball over a little bit against uh, Hawaii in that season opener. Didn't have much of a test against Northern Arizona. I say the Red Raiders finally get on the board with legitimate turnovers and get two. Yeah, uh, Mr. Stigler would vouch for me. I was never good at math. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to say one more than Arizona. Arizona. In a close game mm -hmm. that could be decided by a possession, maybe the last possession or two, that one more possession may be the one that gets it for you. So I'm going to say one more than Arizona. So let's say two to one. I, I, I go two. All right, I agree. Would... I think two is a really good number. Oh, I appreciate that. And you did a really good job in your first edition of board games. Incredibly nervous. I Nerve wracking. I didn't sleep last night. We'll tell you what. Get a little bit of rest, and we'll see you in a little bit with the final call. All right. We'll do that. <laughs> that right now, though, let's check out the slate of games here on KMAC throughout the day as you get ready for that late kickoff for the Red Raiders. It starts with Pitt and Penn State at 11 o'clock right after we're done. That's followed by USC and BYU, the 24th ranked Trojans offense led by offensive coordinator Graham Harrell, freshman quarter, quarterback Keaton Slovis, who's coming off his first career start, a 45 to 20 win over Stanford where he threw for more than 370 yards and three touchdowns. And in prime time, top-ranked Clemson visits Syracuse. Orange beat the Tigers two years ago in the Carrier Dome. This Orange team, though, was embarrassed in College Park by Maryland last week, 63-20. to 20. All right, stick around. More to come here on Countdown to Kickoff. When we return, it's time to talk injuries with our friends from Covenant Medical Group. And later, we tell you what to watch for. Plus, Ryan Hyatt rejoins us after that nap for the final call.